Hey there, Margie Bryce here bringing you the Krabby Pastor podcast. And I don't think you're going to be too surprised to know that it's too easy today to become the Krabby Pastor. Our time together will give you food for thought to help you be the ministry leader fully surrendered to God's purposes and living into whatever it takes to get you there and keep you there. So we're talking about sustainability in ministry. So let's talk about vacation. And I am thinking that you're going to be really interested in hearing about this because by the time this drops, you should be just about to Easter. So you might be more open to hearing about this after many ministry leaders have done all the work that is needed to do prior to and including any kind of Easter festivities or Lent-ish festivities. I guess that's not really a festivity, is it? Anyway, it's the prelude to the festivity. Let's say that. That's a little more accurate. But I wanted to talk about vacation. I'm about to do a vacation, vacating my home and heading somewhere else to live into a different kind of rhythm. And that's a key part of vacation, whether or not you vacate your home is another thing, but what you definitely want to accomplish is to live into a different kind of rhythm than you normally would. That's that's fundamental to what a vacation is, in case you're wondering. Vacation isn't always Disneyland. I could do that for a day, maybe, and then I'm like, okay, been there, done that, and it ceases to be amusing to me, unless you take me to the Tiki Birds about five times. I could do that, but I found that When it comes to ministry leaders and vacation, this is kind of an interesting topic because when I was brand new to ministry, I had just been hired on at a larger church kind of as an associate. You know, I said to the pastor there, "Um, so when do you go on your vacation? And I knew this individual had like three weeks and um, I came to understand that this person did not necessarily take all of their vacation time. And I had encountered that in several arenas with pastors. I don't know, maybe somebody's handing out medals somewhere for this. I have no idea. But it boggled my mind. And maybe it boggles my mind because I'm an introvert. And, you know, you kind of live from one vacation to the next, or at least one moment where you can just get away from everything to the next. So I, I kind of been wondering whether extroverted pastors have a more tricky time stepping back because they enjoy and they get energy from being around people and everything that's going on with people. Whereas an introvert, you know, and I I told my leadership board, man, the fourth face-to-face conversation, heavy face-to-face conversation with a person in one day is kind of a lot. I mean, I can do it and I would push myself to do it to accomplish what I was working on, but man, That just fried me for the day. So I wonder, though, extroverts, that they wouldn't have the same kind of thing. So maybe the idea of being quiet and stepping back and being around fewer people, I guess you could always go to Disneyland for them. But I I just wonder whether this is an introvert-extrovert thing in part as to whether or not people plot and plan for when the next escape is. So, you know, there's one aspect right there. Are you using your vacation time? Now, you can always say, I can't leave. I can't leave. There's a part of that statement that I truly, truly get. I really get it. But on the other hand, if you can't step away for a week or two weeks and not have everything fall apart, then, you know, (laughs) I mean, God can hold it together while you're gone. Really, I mean, I think that's part of vacation is to see that you can step back and step away and everything just doesn't fall to pieces because you're not at the helm. Also, that's a question of leadership. You should be able to step back and have those that you are training up and training into leadership capacity step into that 
not void, but, you know, step into that place for you while you are gone. So that is, you know, there's some leadership questions there. But the the point of vacation is for you to just stop doing the day in and day out routine that you always do and to go do something else. Whether or not you actually get in the car and drive somewhere where you're not going to stay at your home or not. Now, when I have done marriage counseling, one question that we always work through because I just, it's just interesting conversation and you kind of get a sense of where a couple is on this and how it is that they need to work together as a team because that's what marriage is. You're going to be a team. You're going to be on the same side. And so you're going to work together on whatever issue confronts you. And one of those is vacation. So what one person's idea of what vacation is may not be another person's idea. And so then what do you do with that? And I'm going to knit this together in the broader picture of take a vacation. Then, And I can't believe I'm having to say this, but, you know, take your vacation time, would you? But anyway, when I'm dealing with a couple and they're talking about vacations, I always share this story with them about a vacation that I didn't do any planning because I am typically the queen of overprepared, although I have met a few challengers in that department, and I, I am in awe of those people. But I normally would go into planning mode. Well, okay. That's work for me, you know? I mean, I do it, and I have the skill set. It comes fairly natural. It comes fairly easy. But then it's work for me to plan the vacation. You see where I'm going? This this has been somewhat my resistance to camping, and I'll get to that in a minute. But So we decided we were going to Boston as a family, and at that point we were down to the youngest child and my husband and myself, and we're going to Boston, and they're like history freaks anyway. And I'm game to go a lot of interesting places anyway. So, and just being with them is fun too. So, watching their little eyes light up when they see a map. Oh, it's a map. I got to go look. You know, that's fun. It's it's fun for me. But I just decided, forget this. I must have been in a mood. And I just said, I am not planning nothing. We're just going to go. We're just going to go and see what happens. So, I'm sharing this again with a marriage counseling, a premarital, a premarital kind of counseling thing. And I said... I said, well, so then what happened was exactly that. You know, we got there and we spent three days just sort of ambling about and, oh, we're too late for this tour and we can't make it to that. And, oh, my goodness, we're over here. And that other thing we want to see is way over there and and just all of it. And, you know, I just kind of fumed the whole time. Well, I didn't say anything, but I was fuming. You know, it's kind of like that cartoon drawing where there's, you know, smoke coming out your ears. You know, I just kind of did that through the whole vacation. And what I learned is this. Okay, I'm a planning maniac, but but if you plan every minute of every day, for me anyway, that's too close to what I live into in my regular work schedule. But saying, forget this, I'm not planning nothing, that just was not a relaxing vacation for me because I'm doing the woulda, coulda, shoulda thing all the time. So what I I learned from that is I need to do something in the middle. And what followed that vacation was one to New York City that was way different, that was what I called lightly planned. So we found a way to escape, a way to not have it be so much work for me to vacate because sometimes that's your resistance to going on vacation is it's a lot of work a lot of planning for one to go you know the way you'd like it to go or maybe this is my perfectionistic thing you know how a vacation ought to be and 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 I always have to keep in mind that less than perfect can still be good okay when it comes to vacation but Sometimes you you resist going on vacation because you know you're going to work double the week before you leave trying to get everything situated. And then when you get home, even though you work double, you kind of feel like you're working double again. So now if you work double twice, that's like you did four weeks worth of work for or an extra two, let's say an extra two for that one week. It just kind of feels that way, and it's annoying sometimes. So, but that's just life, and you got to tell yourself, I got to do this 
Anyway, I have to go and do a different pace of life. Do you know that there are people in Europe who take a full month of vacation off? Can you imagine that? Because, you know, sometimes sometimes it takes you a good five or six days to kind of unwind, depending on how tightly you're wrapped, I guess. <laughs> it takes you a while to unwind. You know, you get to the place where it's a week and I'm unwound now and, oh, duh, time to go back. So I kind of appreciate that, but Americans are just a little too something to take a full month off. I mean, people's eyes bug out really big if you suggest two weeks, you know, they think, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I'm not sure why. Maybe they think everything's going to fall apart if they're not there, which I think the job of keeping everything together belongs to the Lord God most high, just saying. So, you know, I, I don't really struggle with taking the time off. But I do struggle with how to do nothing, how to do nothing meaningful, how to do nothing of great substance, you know, and that's my introvert whatever, you know, I'm always thinking deep about whatever's going on around me. I'm always thinking, you know, so you typically will not find me sitting on the couch and come up to me and say, say, what you doing? And then I would say nothing. I'm doing nothing. Not that I would say nothing, but, oh, I'm just doing nothing sitting here on the couch. That that is not going to happen, and it almost short circuits the wiring in my brain. So anyway, that's just, that's me. That's how I function. But, you know, I got to tell you, you're not getting um, any kind of a medal for not being able to say that. Nobody's passing out medals for that. You don't get any kind of award for that. You do not get an award for never taking a vacation. I just want to be clear about that in case you're wondering <laughs> or you've or you somehow are giving yourself some kind of extra points in life for never taking a vacation and always working. That is just so push 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 in the culture in our country and it really doesn't help us to live into a different pattern for a few minutes, which we have to do. We really do. Even the Lord took a day off after creating. There was one day where there was rest. So just saying, we do need to do that. If only that we're going to mirror God's behavior, we need to do a vacation. Hey there, this is Margie here, your host of the Krabby Pastor podcast, and I want to urge you to stop surrendering your best self so that you can avoid the burnout that plagues so many ministry leaders. Uh, You don't want to become a Krabby Pastor, that's for sure. So what I've developed is a self-assessment journal style product called Radical Self-Care sustainability for your life and ministry. And what I'm going to do is have the link to it in the show notes so you can go there. It will be the best $29 that you could spend. You can spend then your time. Take time. That's something we don't do when we have big issues. You can take the time to explore how you view self-care and how you need to pursue it a little more. And I'm not about offering you a checklist, that's for sure. But I want to see how self-care can be knit into your heart and into your life so that you can go the distance that God has for you to go. So I'm not really a camper, meaning a person who camps. And I live in Michigan, and there's a lot of camping people here. There's a lot I wasn't raised that way. I did go to Girl Scout camp, you know, built a fire, did s'mores, and that, you know, like summer camp a week. That was it. But I have some friends that are like serious camper people. And we did get hooked into some of them, and they invited us, of course, to go camping, which then, you know, okay, you got to get camping stuff. And I was very worried about what do you do? 
What do you do with yourself for a whole week? What do you do? You know, and I guess we did do some things, you know, like bike ride, boat rides. We did lay on the beach. We did campfires, campfires at night. Oh my gosh, here's one. We took a nap every afternoon. We had little kids with us. I mean, not terribly little. They were like eight, nine, 10, 11, you know. And we said, oh, time to take a nap, everybody. You know, it really was about the adults taking a nap. Anyway, by the, I did nothing that week in the sense that I didn't do anything productive that week. In my mind, it wasn't productive. I didn't do anything of great meaning. You know, I mean, you get on the bike and, you know, where you're going, you're just hoping you're surviving with the pack. Um, In our case, when we were all riding en masse there. And I didn't do anything of great substance either, really. You know, sitting on, we called it beach chair surfing. When you're sitting far enough out in the water on a beach chair that when the waves come up, it washes over about, you know, the lower half of you, and we call that beach chair surfing. That doesn't have any great substance to it or meaning, not a whole lot of value either to just sit and watch the waves come up and wash over you, come up and wash over you. But I have to say I came away from that camping vacation going, all right, I have to admit, I get it. I get it. I understand. I understand. I had successfully unplugged all week enough that I wasn't thinking about stuff at work, which is a big vacation no-no anyway, because you're not going to be able to do nothing about nothing at work while you're on vacation. And you shouldn't. And you should have that boundary clearly set. I will not be working on vacation. So I came away from that camping experience going, wow, I can indeed do nothing for a whole sinking week. I could, I was kind of proud of myself, actually, because I, I didn't think I was capable of it. And I learned the value of doing nothing and unplugging and taking a nap every day. Oh, my goodness. I came home so well rested. It was just unbelievably crazy. And I learned I could do nothing of great meaning for a whole week. No deep substance, except for something like, where are the graham crackers and the marshmallows? Who's got the chocolate? You know, I mean, (laughs) that was the extent of it. But that is the point, my friend. The point is that you are then reduced to the big meaningful thing of the day is how to put together your s'mores. Or, and if you're not about camping, you know, maybe it's something other than that. Maybe you, you uh, like to do more of the urban thing. And I think one year in New York City, we walked the entire length of Broadway, which is a lengthy walk. I, mean, I think it took most of the day. And we just kind of sauntered up there. We didn't have any goals or objectives or anything. We just were kind of sauntering around. And Broadway's, when you look at New York City, everything is a grid except for this one street that goes diagonally up and down, and that's Broadway in New York. And so we just kind of ambled up through and ran into all these cute little parks and just interesting stuff to look at. And we went in stores if it looked interesting. If we just decided to keep walking, that was fine. Grab a cup of coffee, you know, la, la, la. So there's ways that you can fritter time away, as they say, and, and I have to tell you, you can't feel guilty about that when you're doing vacation. But I, I'm, I was impressed with myself that I could indeed fritter time away in such a way that I came back feeling refreshed. So now that you're coming off of, you know, the Easter hustle, and I don't mean that in any negative terms here, I mean that in that's a time and a season when you expect... Um, to be busier than usual, and you expect to be doing things of great meaning, you expect to be doing things of great substance in this season. And I hope you're planning for some time away to just refresh and to cease from the usual schedule, the usual hustle bustle, and go fritter 
some time away, my friend, because you deserve it. Your family deserves it. The people you serve in your church deserve it as you rest and reflect and become that very whole and centered person that God intends for you to be. Hey, thanks for listening. It is my deep desire and passion to champion issues of sustainability in ministry and for your life. So I'm here to help. I stepped back from pastoral ministry and I feel called to help ministry leaders uh, create and cultivate sustainability in their lives so that they can go the distance with God and whatever plans that God has for you. I would love to help. I would consider it an honor. And in all things, make sure you connect to these sustainability practices, you know, so that you don't become the crabby pastor.